Walking the Black Love Matters with their service at the therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or finding out Brock and Michelle. We both messed that up. What was it? Air in my mouth? I don't know what I said. What I had to say. No, finding this, out this, inner this, Brock and Michelle. What's his name? Brock. 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 And Michelle. And Michelle. Who is you? Oh, <laughs> wait. Or inner. <laughs> exactly. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Exactly. I'm Nero. I'm Nayabi. And this is episode 411. <gasps> Four one one. Yes. Here we go. We just trudging along. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but God. Mm-hmm. I think that's literally the theme for everyone I've talked to. But God. Yes. Come on, Neil. Tell them what they need to do. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating and we review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters Black. With no K. If y'all be sending emails to Black with the K, I don't know who the oh, hell they be them. giving all types of trauma. I know, MC, right? To the that people. ain't us. It ain't us. That ain't us. It ain't us. So I'm gonna tell y'all. My check in. Yeah, what's going on? Well, I am very excited because as we are talking right now, the Friday before what is this Halloween? What is Halloween? I don't know. It don't matter. Um, put it this way: we about to go into rainy season in New York. And literally, I looked at my app, and it was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, rain. And guess what days I'm off? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've never been so excited to close my curtains and stay in the house. It's even worse. New York is worse than when we moved to California. I remember being in California and being like, dang, it's sunny. So I feel like I had to go outside and do things every single day. Mm -hmm. And the thing about California is sunny for like 20 months at a time. Then when it finally rains, everyone's like, thank God. I feel like it's similar to New York, where it's like, it's fall in New York. What do you mean you're in the house? Like you have to go somewhere. You have to do something. You have to be moving. But y'all know I'm a closeted introvert, right? What is it? I'm an introvert or extrovert. So I like to be out amongst the people, but I also need my time to recharge. Mm-hmm. When I seen that rain coming, baby, I am so excited. So what I plan on doing soon as the rain begin, I'm going to put me in order to Whole Foods, get me some of my favorite snacks, I still haven't decided what I'm going to cook. I need something that's going to cook all day. Not an ox tail near them, don't ask. But I need something that's just going to be stewing on a stove and bubbling and feeling good. I actually want a soup or a chili or some type of stew with some nice crusty bread. Oh my good. With some good lemon, ice cold lemonade. And then when I get cold, I want some apple cider on the side. What I'm going to be watching, y'all know my show back on. I feel like I'm the only one who is screaming from the rooftops to watch it. Love Life on HBO Max. It's back with season two. And it's black love. Like, literally, Nirma Nayambi should be sponsoring it. It's love life and it's black love. It's that black man. Do y'all know the black man that's from, the um, what is it called? The Good Life? Or the Good, what's the Heaven and Hell show? The Good Place. The Good Place. It's mm-hmm. Cheaty. Cheaty okay. starting it. And we talking about his black love. And then also the other girl, Jessica, who I love. Jessica Williams. Okay. I am, I feel like I'm the only one shouting this from the rooftops. Anybody else want to join us? I'm literally making Niram binge it. And y'all know Niram be like, I don't watch TV. I'm Niram. I'm businessman. I go for runs. I told him he's going to have to watch Love Life because Black Love Matters will be doing a debrief about it. So get excited. Get ready. Y'all might as well go watch this shit too. I think the whole Eastern Seaboard is supposed to be wet. Wet, wet. Supposed to rain. So get excited. Also, Neil, you talking about this in your check-in. What? We're going to be heading to the state of Florida, and I'm nervous. Ooh. Y'all know I don't like it. You know, I, I don't. Neil, I'm looking for something. What no. are you, oh, I, you ain't going to do no soundboard. A scheme. I need to hire that Todd set up. I'm not excited. To, to you with the booze. I'm very scared. So before I go, I'm doing my COVID test. I'm going to get there, hold my breath, and come back and do my COVID, t- COVID, COVID test and lock myself in the house until mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, basically. What you mean? Florida man ain't gonna get you. I ain't worried. I'm, you know, I'm vaccinated, all that stuff, but I just like to be protected. That is all. Oh. Um, next, I'm thinking about work stuff, y'all. It's performance review cycle season. It's always It's also open enrollment, and life is just happening. First, performance review season. Y'all come get your privileged kids. Y'all kids is getting on my nerves. Can you please educate your children to let them know? Actually, I'm talking to the Generation Z, 25 and under. Your work score is not equivalent to your report card. I am not your teacher. I don't give out A, B, C's, and D's. Please stop internalizing this shit. And low key, it don't be the people with the low scores who be internalizing it. Mm-mm. The people with the low scores be like, am I complete? Right. Are you done? Can I be, can you rescind my invitation like true blood? 
It'd be the people with the decent scores are like, why not hire? Because and I'm just like, nigga, you're not perfect. So that's exhausting. What's even been more exhausting is that I don't know what's in the water. And also this goes to open enrollment season. I'm talking about health insurance. You know, we cubicle warriors. Shout out to all the cubicle warriors. Did y'all make your whole health enrollment selections? Make sure you do. I don't know what's happening at my org. I think I've admitted it, but people literally have babies and get married every three months. Starting in January, we have four people who are going out on maternity leave. Ooh, hand clap. Congratulations. And it ain't me. Oh. <laughs> it is it's clap for them, sad for me. Because where I work at, people just don't go on leave. One person, my mouth hit the ground. This was my peer, right? Who was like, yes, I'm going on leave, blah, blah, blah. And she said the dates. And it was so funny. This old white lady came off mute. She said, I make up a name. Jessica, can you repeat your dates again? You're going to be gone. I just missed it for the notes. Jessica fist her mouth to be like, oh, yes, I will be gone December 2021. And I'll be returning January 2020, 2023. Everybody on the was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jessica said, "Fuck with Joe Biden and the Democrats ain't passed no paid maternity and paternity leave in the United States. I'm taking this motherfucking leave, and I'll see y'all. Bet not touch my job. <laughs> but guess who ain't mad? Nyambi, because when I too will get the privilege to step to the altar and be like, I won't be back for 14 years either. <laughs> and honestly, a year is not that much, right? A year, you know. I think in America we've been trained to think." You supposed to just drop that baby and then come on back to work. You know, all that stuff. You should be able to take the time and that should be more normalized. But it was just so funny how the old wine came off mute was like, I'm taking notes. Can you repeat what you said? I'm going to be gone, bitch. 13 months. <laughs> like I said, hey, you bet not touch my shit when I'm I be get gone back. to have a whole nother baby. Yeah. <laughs> she ain't coming back. Yeah, she is. She's going to come back and work and get pregnant again. She, if not hey. pregnant on the, uh, on the what's the name? Hey, listen. That's my plan. Wait a minute. Who, who? I'm going to get pregnant, go on leave for 13 months. I'm going to come back to him for six weeks and be like, I have a surprise for everyone. I'm pregnant again. <laughs> and then hit their ass for another 13 months. By then, my kid will be in fifth grade. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be interested to get back into it. But again, I think of being a cubicle warrior and being in the field I am and working who I work with, like it's such a privilege, right? Like, you know, I tease them and I hit the cry button because I know I'm going to have to pick up some of that slack and, you know, we're going to spread it around. We make, we always make it work in the I told Naomi, you, you ready to get work? That's why I appreciate my org. It's a lot of bullshit, but I do appreciate that. Like, we're going to move around. Your ass around. Um, but just when people can just say that stuff fluently off the tongue and no one blinks, except the old white lady. She's new to the org. She was just like, <laughs> oh, congratulations. <laughs> When? When again? And did she like December, like in a month? Like, <laughs> yes. And then I got another friend in the org who done pulled me aside and was like, bitch, I'm opening up a candy shop. <laughs> I said, bitch, when? She said, in January. I said, girl, damn. I direct to go lose her shit. I hope they paid her good bonus. <laughs> I'm going to just be at the meeting at the top of the year like this. It's just going to be me and the director in the room. Exactly. Look, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to just come to the meeting smiling. Happy New Year. I'll make up a name. Happy New Year, Charlie. How's things going? Looks like your bench is gone. Not bitch. Your bench is just me and you, huh? Mm-hmm. Just me and you. And I, I'm, I'm over here focusing on family planning, Funny. too. <laughs> so you get ready. I'm tagging out, too. Um, so that's been honestly entertaining, but also, um, you haven't seen the universe verse point you in the right direction. They'd be like, cause at first I was like, oh, should I switch out? But I'm like, nah, I'm gonna stay right fucking here. And I'm a, um, double Dutch my ass up in here too. I feel like I'm in the double Dutch line when you're going back and forth. Mm-hmm. You're like, tag me in, tag me. In. Not yet. Okay. Okay. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's something, but um, a little bit of cubicle warrior advice to go through since Niram and I, we've been talking so openly about family planning. You know, we've been looking at our insurance 
And something that we wish we had a little more hindsight to do is really maxing out our HSA. So HSA is a health savings account. And traditionally, you're able to get an HSA or health savings account when you're in a plan that has high deductible, low premium. Did I say that right? Yeah, low premium, high deductible. Yeah, a plan. So meaning a lot of times, like you pay a lower monthly premium. and But when you go to the doctor, before the health insurance kicked in, you have X amount of dollars that you have to pay out of pocket before the health insurance then starts either paying for everything or supplementing it. Um, that plan is often good for people who kind of are healthy. Like you just kind of go to your yearly doctor's appointment. Like you might go if you're sick or something, right? Like costs are pretty low and you're able to balance it out. The benefit of that is that your HSA, which is your health savings account, is that you can max that out with certain monies, right? So you can add pre-tax money into this account. And by adding pre-tax money into this account, right, like, you're basically saving anywhere between 30, 20 to 30 to percent, depending where your tax bracket is, right? Mm -hmm. Per dollar. And you can roll over this money year to year. And as you stack more money into it, so say you put in like usually the maximum, the IRS determines it based if you're just an individual, if it's your family. So let's say on average, you can max up to like 5,000 in this account. You can add it to it every year, like through your check deductible. Say if you had an HSS for five, HSA for five, four years, three years, and you put 5,000 every year, that's $15,000 that can be used for any type of health emergency that came up. And it's pre taxed right? So it was really more money on that because if it would have stayed in your account and went after tax, you would have lost it. Mm -hmm. But the real icing on it is that as as you get older, say if you just keep accumulating money in that account, you actually can put that in a stock market mm. and you can make like a 10% return on that every year. Mm. So in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we always put a little money in it. But like knowing that we're now about to like get deeper into child uh, family planning and stuff like that. I was like, we should have maxed this shit out. Yeah. Like I should at least have 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in this type of account. In that way, you can use that on all your any type of medical expense you have. Right. And I think as again, as we're thinking about family planning, like that's all the appointments that's all the co-pays that's all the bottles like all that stuff can come from that account and it's just one of those things where i was like damn why ain't nobody told us that explicitly mm -hmm. and you don't have to put the max five thousand right but if you only can do a hundred dollars a year five like all that stuff adds up because you can always need it i think of the people who got the invisalign or or if you got children with braces or if you need glasses like that's pre-tax money mm -hmm. that you can have to help with that and then also at tax time it helps you too because it lowers that tax bracket you're in too Ugh. i ain't know i mean i knew but i ain't know mm. i was in my own ass what you gotta say about that Nero? it's for life what? like yeah y'all need to get on it especially if y'all got some entrepreneur girls uh on the squad what you call them entrepreneur girls why you say it like that <laughs> what do you mean by that because that way you know if you got somebody who got a uh, limited earning potential if you got somebody who's doing who got unlimited earning potential and they out there winning, mm -hmm. you need to be able to stuff nest eggs and money is all different. Uh, types different of places. places. That's true. That's true. So say if you're making a a little too bit of a money in your account right. and say you need to divide some of this stuff up. You you're right. Yeah, because you know. Yeah. I'm waiting on my accountant to be like, you need to buy a car. There go near. That's why we're on Niram. We was talking about this and Niram over there. I'm just saying. Let's go to Niram check in. I, I need them to be like, Niram, you got too much money. Go buy a car. Listen, ain't that the blessing? That's the black love blessing. Go Prayer. buy a car. <laughs> just go buy a car. <laughs> to everyone listening, we want your accounts to tell y'all to go buy a car. Go buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> so you can write it off. The black love matters. Because, mm -hmm. yes. you know, certain cars, if they weigh enough, uh, you can write off that whole car in That's the first true. year. That's true. So you just go buy a car. That's true. You can just write that shit off. You you just need a whole fucking car. Yeah, true. Uh, what's going on with me? Not much. You know, we're getting ready to go to Florida. We got a little trip Ooh. to Florida. I'm exciting. Mm. I'm excited. Actually, um, I'm lucky. I have a family member down there. I plan on just hiding in their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> I got another race. Hopefully, it don't end up. It, it's not. But it's not going to end up like how we did last time. Oh, I don't know what I don't know what the fuck Florida health care system looks like. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you go play in Florida if you want. Fuck around. No, nope, nope, we're not. We're gonna take it easy. We're gonna have electrolytes. You're not gonna eat a steak. All the things. 
So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's what's going on. I mean, I, other than that, I'm just catching up on a lot of projects. Yes. You know, I got this big project going on. If you know, you know. Uh, that's due earlier next year. And, you know, I'm just trying to blaze, well, not blaze through it, but, like, work through it, right? Mm-hmm. So doing that, I'm on a board of a couple of nonprofits. And they're like, Nerum, um, we would love to, like, pick your brain on, like, Uh-oh. social media and marketing Uh-oh. and things of that sort. Did, it, did your profile? I was wondering if we can have, like, a reoccurring meeting. And I'm Damn, like. How reoccurring? I thought it was going to ask for 30 minutes. They asked for 30 minutes. And then it was like, so can we have a reoccurring meeting? And I was like, no. Monthly. <laughs> <laughs> it's quarterly. Quarterly. You, I you was like, do service to be on the board. I understand that. And I was like, you know, um, I would gladly to to do it. Just However, lying. Well, no. The way you stumbling is lying. Because everything I'm going to tell is true. I would gladly do it. However, it is race season. So, uh, Nerum travels around the United States and the world to go where run you go, races. The United States. The United States and the world. Uh-huh. National and international. I ain't been nowhere international. <laughs> but go ahead. So, that's one thing. And I got this big ass project I'm working on. So, y'all can't, y'all can't do none of that until after this project. I said, hit me in March. Oh, my God. In February, you March. You couldn't even get one meeting and then say. I said, if it's dire, yes, I have a 30 minute meeting with you. But it got to be two weeks in advance. <laughs> You on a board. I understand it's that. Your I understand it's that. But these person. niggas, I am. This is crunch time. I'm about to ask you what board, but never mind. This is crunch time. I hear you. You have to prioritize. And so yourself. I am prioritizing. Like I don't know how many times I got to you tell have to niggas. Relentlessly prioritize. I think you can make thirty minutes work, but you have to relentlessly. Prioritize. I don't know how many times I got to tell niggas I'm working on this project, and this mm-hmm. project takes precedence of everything. I hear you. I'm not saying it doesn't. I didn't got so much. I had to start scheduling uh, phone calls and meetings with my friends. How you do that? <laughs> Look, I just don't. <laughs> I know you don't. You don't pick up. <laughs> you don't pick up or you don't call. <laughs> they know my heart. And don't even text. They know the siren. Yes, I, I do. That makes even, it the siren. I come. I don't even know why you even got a phone. See, my thing is, I'm a friend. Though. If you just hit me with the hit hot, and I'm coming. If you hit me with the right test message, I'm on the next plane mm-hmm. without a confirmation. Go ahead. So you know, I didn't got to the point where I was like, hey. How's Wednesdays at five? Oh. Other friend, friend B. Hey, how's Thursdays at five? Have they agreed? Because they're good friends. I'm yes. sure they have. Uh-huh. Yes, they agreed. Yeah. So it's like, look, look, we're just going to put this on a reoccurring calendar. Okay. We can't talk. We can text. But if you want to talk to me. You shouldn't say that. You mean if you want to talk intentionally. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, because, you know, as we get older, you have to be present for conversations. You can tell when you're friends. Like, you know, when you're younger, you can have them little superficial conversations when you're back and forth. But as friends, you get older, you can tell a friend if they're not engaged in the conversation. Yeah. So I, I receive that. Like, so, if you want me to be engaged and aware, yes. this is the ideal time. Wednesdays at five. So, because sometimes you just need a friend just like, I just need somebody breathing on this end. You're like, okay, okay cool. cool. I'm cool. walking now. I'm, I'm multitasking. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I got to do. Sometimes you just need people to be like, uh huh, uh huh. But if you need thoughtful responses, Wednesday at five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I just had to get that because, you know, I am definitely prioritizing. And then the other thing is like I got other couple things that I'm uh, a few other exciting things. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a, um, I ain't going to tell much, but I came back, I, I had a meeting and I came back with some stuff and I was like, here you go, baby, just for you. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> How were you surprised? I was surprised because sometimes Neil don't be thinking. Uh, you think I don't about, be thinking about you. I was going to say me. I was just going to say people. You. In general, mm-hmm. and I have to remind him that he has a whole dog and a whole woman here. He like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. sorry, Nyambi. So I was impressed you remember, mm-hmm. or yeah. even get the appropriate sizes. You know, it's a type of buy something like an extra small and then a three X, and be like, I figure you fit one of these. And it's just like, oh, okay, thank you. Went to the store and it's like, so is there anything you would like? I was like, well, what can I have? Like, you can have anything in the store. Anything she told the east side Detroit nigga that my god, <laughs> Nip, can yeah, I have a cash register? friends, family, look, friends, look at that. A cash register, shit. Nigga shit. can I have that? Yeah, I'll that is door, <laughs> so, that is you know, mannequin. And it's like, yeah, you can come on back, let us know you need some more stuff. I was like, oh, okay, it's time to go Christmas shopping. Listen, someone who's listening gonna get a gift from that. I, the show list, and they gonna appreciate it, they gonna appreciate it, appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, this was going on with me. What yeah. we got for uh. We got some quick pillow talks to mm-hmm. talk about. Um, first of all, 
Honestly, can we talk about these HBCUs? Yeah, can we get like a, a scheme that and how it, set up and all them the, the students is they still outdoors? I don't know. Let me check and see. Let me yeah, check my still phone out and there. see if they still outside. Students, they gonna try to push y'all to Thanksgiving break until you just don't come back. <laughs> well, for I'm sure if you've been under the rock, you've heard this. Basically, students are in like horrendous conditions, meaning. Roaches, rats. I should say rats. I think it's a roach in there, though. There's roaches. There's roaches. I don't know if it's rats. Let me see. Allegedly rats. But, like, bad plumbing, mold. Just basically not overall upkeep of the university um, property for the students. And the students basically have had enough of it. And, honestly, they've been talking about this for years. This is not the first time I've heard students complain about living conditions, not just at Howard, but a few HBCUs. And they finally was like, fuck it. We walking out. They submitted a list of demands and what they need and how they need it. And they done had that black woman who had a student affairs. And she done gave this old politi- politicized politic and response as an answer, no answer. But I don't know. What you think? I ain't never been to no HBCU. I have. I went to PWIs. I have. And, and let me I tell will you. say at the PWI, I did not have problems with ratchets, roaches, <laughs> Or infrastructure. Let me tell you. Even in the older, I lived in an older dorm for a few years, and I did not have that trouble. The grass is green on the other side. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. HBCUs are good um, institutions. Mm, mm, yeah, but, but the I grass never... is greener on the other. Hey, look, I'll and the take. Thing is, I didn't even go to the top public school in my. I'll state. take living in the dorm at a PWI than I ever take living at that fucking black college. But I think what's egregious about Howard is Howard gets so much money. Yes. It has such prestigious alumni that that'd be like saying Harvard or Yale mm-hmm. has inhabitable conditions, so which is unacceptable. So that's the color spade of state. Let's go ahead and put it out there. Okay. Near went to a black college. You did? I went to a black college for my first year and a half in college. Yes. Played football there, yada, yada, yada. I didn't go to like one of the popular black colleges. No, definitely not. I didn't go to no one the popular. I went to no. a, one of the smaller black colleges. Yes. Didn't even know it was a black college. Just like a backyard. Mm-hmm. How many students were there? Three? 1,200. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I understand. And, you know, I went to and visited all the popular ones because we had to play against them in football. Was it in different? Football. No, everybody was in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> no. Everybody it's was in like the hood. It's like Detroit Public School playing against Detroit Public School. It's like cast that playing against, <laughs> you know. Well, same thing. Yes. Okay. It, just like that. Okay. So, like, yeah. And this is back in 2004, yeah. right? 2004, 2005. Our shit was the projects. We had <laughs> roaches at 2004, 2005. Oh, my god. We didn't have locks Y'all on our tuition. doors. Yes. In room and board. Mm-hmm. Ain't no locks on the doors. My dead boy. Ain't no locks missing. on the doors. Yes. Oh, no. My dead boat was missing when I got to that room. Who the, who bit it off? I don't know. My gosh. You had all types of roaches in there. Yes. This is something. I was so embarrassed that I, Nyambi. Did you have roaches in your, you bring roaches back to Detroit? Yes. <gasps> I know your mama cussed you out. Cussed me the fuck out. Where did she see the roach? <laughs> Why the fuck? Did it come out f- your backpack? Yes. Oh, my God. He came all almost told you where you was at. <laughs> all the way from there. The tra- and it's down south. Yes. So them them water bugs, them big. <laughs> and then came back to Detroit. He ain't gonna make the winner. What yeah. the fuck is this shit? What the <laughs> fuck is this bullshit? Nasty ass nigga. And I'm like, no, our school and I keep I remember I kept telling my family, like, no. We got roaches here. And I remember it's like, what do you want for your care package? Right. And Raymond Noodles and Raid. R and R. <laughs> I was gonna say one of our friends gonna ask for the bomb. Did I tell y'all one of our friends visited us? <laughs> and we like, what y'all been up to? Like, cause they came to visit. They said, yeah, we just came out to visit y'all. We was like, oh, what's going on with y'all? Oh, you know they just bombing our house, so we come to visit y'all. I said, oh, shake your clothes. Shake I said, clothes. let's go on a deck. <laughs> <laughs> Shake your clothes. Shake your said, clothes. What my face do now? And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then Naomi texted me. Did I hear that right? Did you say they do it? They got a roach bomb on them? Because I couldn't repeat it back to them. <laughs> I couldn't. But yeah, <laughs> our, I remember being at, and I, I left because it's a few things. Like our lunch rooms closed super early. Like four o'clock. Like 4 30. My Lord. So like at the. Shit, at the 4.30, it's a wrap. Yeah. Ain't nothing open. Yeah. We only had one calf. 
Yeah. You had to be in it. They you had to be on the dorm at a certain hour and shit. <laughs> they had curfew. Yes. Why? That feel illegal. Because. Why you got to tell people be, why? Look, look, now I'm PWI. Why I got to be back? And then, you know our black college is a um, like was it religious? Religious black. Oh, college. that's why. That's so why. you had chapel every fucking Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. And was it roaches in there? Yes. Oh my! God. The the chapel was in the basketball court. <laughs> the basketball court uh, second as an we auditorium. Need, let's. How do we make this positive? We need more infrastructure around <laughs> our HBCUs. Also, HBCUs a lot of them land grant, so they get money from you know like mm-hmm. the government and everything. So, I left there. Yes, I, I was fed. Fun. I was fed up. Of course, you know some football stuff happened, but I was like, I was fed up. Oh my goodness. So. So you came to the PWI. We met me. What you thought you were in the lap of luxury? And you know what? Uh, oh, the dorms the I was new. in. I was in the new dorm because I wasn't paying the premium. I said I'm gonna stay in the old ones. I was in the new Nero dorms. Nero was the first person to sleep in that room with the suites. The suites were nice. Ooh, I came from. How nice were they? Look, I came from a roasted, festive project to the suites. To the suites at with a PWI. Too, wasn't it? Yes, don't even care with the suites, and was living good. Never look back. Best, best decision I ever Calf made in my life. Calf open from 6 a.m. to <laughs> yes. 1 in the morning. Exactly. And then you get, we got a little convenience store that mm-hmm. don't close to 3, 4. Exactly. Never look back. Best decision I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to lie. The HBC will be about to be mad at you. <laughs> they, look, I don't care because the experiences I experienced at that year and a half at that HBCU, and it was like, it truthfully, I don't even want to go down there because, like, no, you know, they'd be like, about the dorms. Oh, yeah, we're gonna Not keep the about the dorms because they'd be like, they'd be like, black college experience, black career. Nigga, I went to, I was from DPS. I've been around niggas all my life. Yeah, that ain't new. I've been around a variety of Negroes. I've been around a variety Hotets, of niggas. Um, blacks, Africans. My, my cousins, my cousins from Mississippi and shit. Yeah. I got cousins California. I'd yeah. go, I had to go there for summers and shit. So I'd yeah, have been around see. niggas. Yeah, I'd have been around Cali niggas. I'd have been around Mississippi We'd niggas. Have been around Africans. Yeah, Africans. I'd have been around all types yeah. of niggas. So like that whole black college experience bullshit with these roaches. What the fuck is this? Yeah. I ain't ready for this bullshit. Detroit's always very unique because not many cities, like you got Detroit, Chicago, some places in the Mm -hmm. DMV that's literally all Atlanta, that's black. Yeah. And some people, like it is, it's only like five or so cities in America where it's like, oh yeah, everybody black. Like, you know, people talk about New York being diverse. New York is diverse. New York is not black. No. It's no idea of the black Mm -mm. experience of New York. Like you got to go to like uh, three blocks of Bed-Stuy or two blocks in Harlem to Mm -hmm. experience a black experience in New York. Yeah. Where Detroit... Yes. You get the crackhead, you yep. get the judge, you get the realtor, you get the miller class, you get a taste of everything. It's literally a microcosm of the world. Yes. Of blackness, right? You get a little taste of all the types of black. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, best decision I did was leave that black college and go to that PWI. Just don't do that. I, look. Please send all correspondence <laughs> look, you can. to Black Love Matters. That's black with no K at Gmail. Please direct them to Nero. Look, I don't give a fuck. I was there. I experienced that black college experience. I didn't visit the other. <laughs> I have so I can't say. I played much. football against the other black colleges and seen their dorms and shit. <laughs> that shit was not popping. You said Clark was raggedy. Too. Exactly, <laughs> Clark is raggedy, and I think I seen the ropes there too. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> What did you bring? Did no. it fall out of you? No, I'm talking about when I had my my nephew went to a Clark. Okay, I thought you was being mean. You just come to your college, just shake your no. backpack and leave. Because my, my nephew went to Clark, and I remember like, ooh, y'all dorms worse than ours. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to come to this black college. <laughs> We make it light of it, but <laughs> structure needs to be put in place, especially mm-hmm. at these some of these bigger names. Yeah. And they have to do it. Like you have to have a certain level of standards. And just like we see the good, we talk about the bad too. Yes. So infrastructure, residence life, student activities, they, they whoever the leaders of these organizations and directors and VPs have to be held accountable for it. So you students, y'all stay out there and catch a code and don't let them deter you because they're gonna get you distracted. Yeah, they gonna send y'all ass home for Thanksgiving, and then come back in January like ain't nothing happened. Mm-hmm. Stay strong. <laughs> it's still gonna be roaches there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they gonna do something. They gonna have a little can of raid at front of every door. You know, you give door decks. Yes, a little decoration. You know, you already give you a gift back. It's gonna be a ra- it's gonna be a mouse cat trap. Oh my god. Oh Naomi, and then we had shared showers. And no one cleaned them. Shit was dirty than a motherfucker. Yeah, oh my cleaned, god. Yeah. Well, I'm actually, not... I didn't have a share shot. We had a bathroom in. That's what I'm saying. We had a bathroom no. in our room no, that only each, you and your roommate shared. Each floor had its own bathroom, and then it had like the prison showers in there. Don't do that. I'm for real. I'm telling you, when I went to that PWI, my nigga. So you had to carry your stuff in a little um, yes, netted bag and a, and a caddy. 
And then them little With old the shower navy shoes. flip-flops. Yeah. Uh, With some Adidas shower shoes. It ain't, you ain't had no Adidas. It was the old navy $1. No, they were Adidas. Adidas shower shoes. <laughs> and then, you, you know, you had to, like, make noises so another nigga won't walk in on you while you naked, showering, and rubbing your dick, trying to clean your dick off. And then here oh, comes another nigga. Only one person could take a shower at a time? Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> Well, or y'all you, only did it. Y'all had no curtains. No, or no, no. Like curtains. you know, how sometimes it won't be curtains, but it's like no corner. Like you can prison showers. There was two <laughs> poles in the middle of the shower area, and it had like five spouts on each one of those poles. So, did anyone ever take a shower with more than one person? Some niggas did. <laughs> that wasn't me. As soon as the nigga seen, as soon as I seen a naked ass nigga coming in here, I'm getting the fuck Why out. Why can't you take a shower together? No. Nah. No, thank you. It ain't like they was clean that they look in you in your eyes. No. Because some of them niggas get too damn comfortable. They want to have conversations with you, like you at the urinal and shit. I hate that. Why the fuck are you What's talking to me? What's the difference? Because I hate that shit. Why are you talking to me with your dick in your hand? The fuck? What? This is, it's a great day outside. Oh, Stop talking guy. to me. So that's how niggas be. They just be you having full like ass. They said, can you get my back? No, but niggas be having full ass trying to have full ass casual ass conversations. You, both of y'all niggas naked as fuck. No shower curtain, no Girl. coof, no nothing. Yeah, usually it's like a little shower curtain or nothing. like they'll have it delayed. Or not even that it's like a lot, but like, you know, just to fog it out a little bit. Mm-mm. So you don't got to see all your imperfections. The locks on the bathroom stall. Like work. you only should be able to see the silhouette of no. that shape. <laughs> no, you seen everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all young and stupid and right. nobody got no coof either. And then, you know, then come no the, discretion. Yeah, exactly. It's like, nigga, why are you over here looking at me? Look at the sky or something. <laughs> you can tell the people like don't got bad social skills. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and, man. and don't understand distance. Hey, bro, you <laughs> went to the cab today? <laughs> you back up. <laughs> why are you talking to me? I'm more, it ain't the talking, it's the how close you are to me. Yes. Like, can you give me some sense? Like, I shouldn't be able to wash my arm and like my elbow hit you. <laughs> like, it's too much. <laughs> So yes, I admit that. And like I said, I went to that PWI. I was like, "Ooh, you got we got your separate own shower." Your in, the, own in the bathroom showers. was nice, like hotel rooms. Ooh, bathrooms was nice. And if something wrong, you called a, a maintenance Ooh, person. I felt like they had a uh, uh, marble floors and shit. And you marble go down and pick up your toilet paper from the front desk. Man, the toilet paper was free. I had to bring my own toilet paper. Okay, oh, it's shout out Friday. Also, in the line of HBCUs, Divine Nine Talk, people have asked me how I feel about the insecure debacle. I said, what debacle? Y'all stop this. For y'all who don't know, I am a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, mm-hmm. and I have no comment. You get the email? Yep. I know they had to send one. I got the email. What to say? They ain't get no clearance. I We got bigger fish to fry, Alpha, 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 Alpha Kappa Alpha. We just got bigger fish to fry. And if we thought niggas weren't interested in Divine Nine, we just go ahead and solidify that. But the thing is, um, go ahead. This is a, no, this is just me. I mean, and it might be unpopular. And they probably should have got clearance, right? Like, it is. But I just think it's a lot of other things for Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated to be investing their time, energy, and lawyers' fees into. And it's not insecure. And low key, high key, we don't want no smoke with HBO lawyers. I was going to say, doesn't it fall under fair use? Oh, I don't know. That's why I said we don't want smoke with HB, um, HBO's lawyers because I'm you know, sure they're going to do that. You know, I know y'all Greeks be so serious about y'all uh, shielding everything. At first, the way when I first read the story, I said, well, did Amanda Seals have a um, fire pit ritual and just threw all AKA paraphernalia, uh, paraphernalia in it and then live streamed it? Because that's the way y'all was acting. <laughs> then I was like, I watched the same Insecure show y'all watched. And yes, I seen her AKA out, which is what a lot of K's do. Now, I'm not sure how K's act from Ivy League because that's not where I came from. But I, I thought it was a little off. Um, honestly, just the um, you can tell non Greek people wrote it mm-hmm. because as a if I had crossed in undergrad, I'm not coming back for that alumni weekend dressed in a pink and green suit. I've never seen like oh like at, at HBCUs right, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about Mom, at at, at Ivy Leagues. I'm gonna stop you there. But at Boule, maybe. Mm-hmm. But y'all also know I'm a little bit more low key. Here. Well, I'm gonna stop you there because I seen our you know our homecoming. Yes, was just last week. Yes, and you know I've been sleuthing on the black home the the the, the black what was it called? Yes, the Black Alumni Association. Yes, 
And they was dressed just like Tiffany. But that's homecoming. Mm -hmm. Wasn't this alumni weekend? Which is usually during homecoming. I thought that was two separate things. No. I, well, ours are the same. Maybe I... Either way, I I think it is a fight we should not fight. I think Alpha Kappa Alpha should have took it as a nod. And then they should have tried to pivot their way to get East and them to sponsor something. Because when I seen the when I seen the blacks uh the blacks at uh, our our university, the reds was wearing red red tops and black bottoms. I seen the cues. Was they wearing Gucci? They can't afford it. They can't afford Gucci. I seen the cues and and purple suits. Maybe I was confused on what event they were at. Oh, homecoming maybe, but I thought they were at like alumni networking weekend. No, and I don't give a fuck what none of y'all say. If I go back to anywhere alumni networking, I am not about to be dressed to head to toe in pink and green. The mm. most y'all might get out of me is a pin. They had their crossing jackets on. Oh, they fit them? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking at these niggas. Come on, like, come on, come on. It's getting toxic. <laughs> Either way, now Yambi's personal response is Alpha Kappa Alpha got bigger fish to fry. Um, <laughs> leave me out of it. Also, I'm a general member. I was thinking. So I might not even have any um, stake in it. They might come back. Um, what is it? Nationals might come back and be like, bitch, you don't got no vote. I was thinking, like, why the fuck this thing you got this old ass jacket? I'm, on? I'm a general member. I am a general member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. Um, good luck. So y'all stop emailing me. I don't have thoughts. What would he say? I don't think about it. Mm. Come on, we getting into Shout Out Friday. <laughs> come on, we getting into Shout Out Friday. <laughs> Niram's looking for the pictures. <laughs> Shout out Friday. Sure. Shout it out. All right, y'all. So um, as always, if you have anything you want to um, send to us, you can do an email, voicemail, all of that good stuff. Um, we don't have too many. I think we got a couple voicemails or no? Yeah, we got two. Okay. Um, so what look we at these niggas. Stop. Look, look at the Look at the Zetas. All with their blue shit Homecoming's on. okay. Mm -mm. But I thought it was, y'all know how sometimes there's like a, a networking alumni weekend type stuff? I don't think it's appropriate to wear today. Look at the reds. Homecoming's, all the reds got all their things homecoming on. Homecoming is okay. Look at that purple suit. Hey, y'all. I'm trying to keep up the episodes. <laughs> but life has been busy lately. I'm uh, in a good way, but I just want to stop in and say, hey, Niram, I'm so excited for you in this Boston Marathon. Lots of positive energy coming um, down from you. Nyambi, you still have me cracking up about, up about the therapist and everything else. I've been talking about Squid Games like I know what's going on because y'all keep me in a loop. LOL. Take care, Juliana. What's up, Juliana? Niram said we ain't had no Apple podcast. We don't. Nigga, we just... We just got back consistent. I don't. I, we got four hundred and eleven episodes. <laughs> if y'all don't niggas don't leave no fucking review. <laughs> oh no! Episode four. <laughs> Shit. Be so shady. Somebody go critique episode four. <laughs> we got four hundred and eleven episodes. Yeah. The fuck. Okay. The bullshit. Hit it. I'm on one today. I know. <laughs> Look at this purple suit. Why this nigga got this on? Homecoming's okay. Hi, Niram, Nayambi, and Mabel. Hey. This is Rashida calling from St. Louis. Hey. I was just giving you guys a call. I really was giving Nayambi a call because I want to be a part of this uh, Sisters with No Sisters group. Oh, welcome. Because a sister is struggling. You know, <laughs> I've really been thinking, like, is it a reason why I'm my only child? Because I really, I, I just don't like people. I don't know what it is. <laughs> And I've been trying to find, like, my group, but yeah. maybe this only child thing is where I'm supposed to be at. I don't know. Oh, no. Anyways, you guys stay blessed. Stay safe. I hope you have a fabulous weekend, Thank you. week, whatever it may be. This is Rashida again, call from St. Louis. Talk to you later. Oh, Bye. Thank you. Welcome, our new initiate of Sisterhood and No Sisters. I'm working on planning a meeting. What, what's y'all do's? Don't worry about it. Oh. Are y'all incorporated yet? Of course we are. Oh. We about our business oh. in the sisterhood of those sisters. Oh. Go ahead. Interesting. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Tanaja. What's up, Tanaja? I'm gonna be short and sweet. I just wanted to call and wish Niram good luck for uh, his marathon. And Thank you. Hope, hoping that you all are uh, settling into New York properly as well as Mabel. Yeah, um, just wanted to wish y'all some. You know, good positive energy. Thank you. And um, yeah, just saying, hey, have yeah. a good one. Yeah, it's so good to hear from y'all. And we know everybody doing what they're doing. Like, like I said, y'all know we we might miss a week or even a couple weeks here and there. But like, if we ever stop, we gonna let y'all know. But we still committed. We still rolling. 
So thank y'all so much for thinking of us and checking in. You know we love y'all. Yeah. Perfect. As always, submit your Black Love Story. Go to blacklovematters.com to submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk. Shoot us an email, blacklovematters at gmail.com. Remember, that's black with no K. To leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. We got that SoundCloud and we got that voicemail at 508-784-1111. Once again, that's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is ever, ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.